Shalom. I've been getting a fair number of emails, people asking me, uh, saying, um, you know, I'm born again, how come I keep on sinning? <laughs> I laugh because um, being born again doesn't mean that you instantly become perfect, you know? Um, also, uh, Ron, how you doing? <laughs> Ron emailed me the other day and said he did a search on uh, my uh, YouTube videos looking for uh, something about temptation. Falls into the same, uh, the same category, so I thought I would do a teaching about temptation and uh, uh, sinning. Sin, by the way, merely means to miss the mark. It's an archery term. You shoot the arrow, you aim at the bullseye, you miss the bullseye, you sinned. You just, you miss the mark. It's not as uh, drastic a word as uh, uh, most people have been indoctrinated, you might say, to believe. I thought I'd start off with Matthew uh, chapter 6, verse 33. It's often uh, used in, in such a way that gives the wrong impression. It reads, Seek first the kingdom of Elohim and his righteousness, and all these shall be added unto you. Uh, all these? Well, if you read a little earlier, it's uh, talking about what shall we eat, what shall we drink, what shall we wear. So, seek you first the kingdom of Elohim and all his righteousness. And... Um, all these, what shall we eat, what shall we drink, what shall we wear, will be added unto you. In other words, you know, your, your needs will be taken care of. If you seek his kingdom and his righteousness first and foremost, really only in your life. Um... And I say that, you know, a lot of times that's taught in such a way that's misleading because um, it doesn't mean that you're going to become wealthy and a lot of money is going to come into your life and all of a sudden you're going to be buying cars and jet planes. <laughs> As, you know, often is um, the way that it's presented by some of these evangelists, uh, television evangelists and so on. Now, if you're born again, if you're born anew, you have uh, Elohim in your life. You have his indwelling Kodesh spirit. You have the Messiah walking with you, dwelling with you, in you. Your life changes. This is a fact. There's no question about it. Your life changes in many ways. Um, it's a gradual changing. And um, the strength of the change really uh, depends a lot on you. How much time you spend with him throughout the day thinking about him in relationship to what's going on um, moment by moment, your experiences. Do you relate them to him? Or are you thinking about him in your experiences? How much time do you spend in prayer? How much time do you spend uh, seeking the greater truths of his word? Um, your growth is in direct relationship to that. 
John chapter 16, verse 33, points out that, you know, once you're born again, it doesn't mean that you become perfect. Are you going to stop sinning? You know, nobody stops sinning. None of us are without sin ever, not until he comes. John chapter 16, verse 33 reads, Yeshua is speaking, and he says, These I've spoken to you that in me you might have shalom, peace. In the world you will have pressure, but take courage, I have overcome the world. Uh, some versions I'm reading, of course, from the Hallelujah Scriptures. Some versions say in the world uh, you will have tribulation. Some people like to uh, say that that means we're going through the tribulation. No, no, no. There's a difference between experiencing tribulation and going through the, capital T, tribulation. Um, but here in the uh, Hallelujah Scriptures it reads, In the world you have pressure, but take courage. I have overcome the world. Um, you have made the Messiah, Yeshua, your master. He is in charge of your life. You have given up your life to follow him. He's in charge, but right here he's telling you, so long as you're in this world, you will have pressure. The word for pressure there in the original language is from Strong's Exhaustive Concordance, number G2347. It's pronounced thripsis. And it means a pressing. It refers to oppression, affliction, distress, tribulation. As long as you are in the world, you will have trouble. You will be oppressed. You will have affliction. But be of good cheer. Take courage. Because your master, Yeshua, has overcome the world and there is going to be a time where we will no longer uh, be oppressed. Now, um, you know, what is this affliction in the world? We're, we're not of this world. We are of His kingdom. But we are in the world. And this world is ruled by Satan. It's a world of darkness and confusion. So as long as we're in this world, there will be trouble. Why? Look at Ephesians chapter 2. It says, You were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the ruler of the authority of the air, of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. The spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. Um, it starts off saying, you were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world. Now, you're no longer dead in trespasses and sins. You no longer walk according to the course of this world, but you are in this world. And the ruler of the authority of the air, the spirit that's now working in the sons of disobedience, is, uh, is all around us. We are, uh, this is uh, Satan's world. It's a world of darkness and confusion. John 12, 31 tells us that uh, Satan is the ruler of this world. So, um, as long as we're in this world, you know, there are demons around us. They've attached themselves to us since we were children. Um, little issues that came up, even as infants, and certainly as, uh, as young children, young adults, on and on it goes. Uh, some event in your life, something upsetting comes up, 
and uh, a demon attaches uh, itself to you. And then every time something that comes up that even remotely might remind you of uh, that irritation, the demon whispers in your ear, ah, see, you're, you know, you're no good. Uh, or, you know, they don't, they hate you, or, you know, whatever the issue is. Everyone has issues, and every one of those issues are demonic attachments. Uh, demons attach themselves to these things, and they love to remind people. I have a couple of links in the more info section below this video to uh, two other uh, videos that I've done previously. Um, that will delve into that issue uh, more deeply and, and also talk about how to, uh, to battle it, how to defeat it, how to work against it. But um, so long as we're in this world, so long as the Messiah has not returned, whether it's the Harpazo or the Second Coming, um, we will be in constant warfare. James chapter 1. Uh, verse 12 through 15 reads, Baruch, blessed, is the man who endures trial. For when he has been proved, he shall receive the crown of Chai, the, the crown of life, which the Master has promised to those who love him. I have another teaching about the crowns. There are a number of them. Uh, verse 13, let no one say when he's enticed, I am enticed by Elohim. For Elohim is not temptable by evil, and he entices no one. So you're being told right there. You go through trials, that's not uh, Abba Father who's trying you. He doesn't do that. It's the devil, or it's, you know, Demons that have attached themselves uh, to you. And uh, there are generational attachments that, that run through generations and family bloodlines and so on. Verse 14, But each one is enticed when he is drawn away by his own desires and trapped. Look at verse 15. Then, when desire has conceived... It gives birth to sin. And sin, when it's been accomplished, brings forth death. Let's back up on that. When desire has conceived, first of all, sin is always born in your thoughts. It starts with your thoughts. And the thought is usually, oftentimes, not your own thoughts. It's a demon whispering in your ear some pet peeve that you've had for years. These are the strongest ones. Learn to recognize them. And then apply 1 John 1, 9. Confess them to the Father. Bring them to Him. Put them out on the table and confess them to the Father and thank Him for cleansing you of it. But it starts with a thought. A demon whispers in your ear. And then um, that thought thought leads to a desire. A lot of times your desires are not, you know, positive things. Oh, gee, I, I want to have fun. Everybody wants to have fun. Sometimes our desires are negative things. I want to hate that person. I want to remember how that person did me wrong, and I want to feed on it. If it wasn't for that person, this bad thing never would have happened to me. You know how that can fire you up? That's a, a desire being planted in your thoughts by a demon. Oh, remember that? They did that to you. How dare they? And, you know, you start feeding on it. It starts festering. And then, when it's conceived... When you agree with the demon, when you dwell on this thought long enough to say yes to it, now you're in agreement with the powers of darkness. You're joining 
forces with it by agreeing with it. Yes, that person was wrong when they did that to me. They do deserve to be punished. You know, that kind of procession. That gives birth to sin, missing the mark. The mark is uh, Philippians 4, 8. We'll get to that in a minute. But then it says, and sin, when it's been accomplished, brings forth death. You know, you don't fall down on the floor and the next day they're burying you. That's not death. Death is not having the indwelling Kodesh spirit of Elohim. So you've chased the spirit out, his spirit, because you've been making an agreement with darkness. Darkness has left, and now you're experiencing death, misery, anger, uh, horrible thoughts. Um, let's take a, a turn over to Philippians. Remember I said sin is missing the mark? <laughs> Here's the mark. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8 um, says, Whatever is true, <laughs> you know, if it wasn't for that person, you know, I wouldn't have this misery. You know, that's not true. That's a lie. If it wasn't for your attitude about that person, you know, you never blame anyone else for any problems you have. That's always a lie. If you have a problem, the person to blame is yourself, never anyone else, because it's the way that you react to things that um, uh, determine the effect they have on you. Um, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is righteous, whatever is clean, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good report, if there's any uprightness, if there's any praise, think on these. That's the mark. To focus on the light not on the darkness. Um, geez, we have to get back to, uh, you know, I've said before, there, there are over 600 commandments, but everybody always talks about the 10 commandments. Of course, um, how many people know the 10 commandments? Commandment number one, Thou shalt love Yahweh thy Elohim with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. You shall have no other gods before Elohim. Um, Deuteronomy chapter 5, starting with verse 7. You shall have no other mighty ones against my face. The second commandment. Do not make or bow down to any graven, carved images. I've gotten rid of every form of a statue or little images, you know, ceramic, whatever. Get them out of your house. Um, Deuteronomy 5, uh, verse 8, do You do not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of which is in the Shamayim, the heavens above, or which is in the earth beneath, or which is in the waters under the earth, fish, dolphins. <laughs> do not bow down to them, don't serve them. For I, Yahweh, your Elohim, am a jealous El, visiting the wickedness of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me. My point about this is um, his, his commandments are not, uh, you know, rules like you do this or I'm going to punish you. No. His commandments are, here's how to avoid temptation. Here's how to get away from sinning. Follow these rules and you won't. Uh, stumble. 
uh, the devil won't have access to you. This is the way to protect yourself. Verse 10 in Deuteronomy, but showing kindness to thousands, to those who love me and guard my commandments. Um, don't bring the name, third, third commandment, don't bring the name of Yahweh, your Elohim, to naught. Don't bring Yahweh's name to nothing by removing it from the scriptures or by not speaking it or by calling him something that's not his name, like Jehovah, which is actually cursing him. Jehovah means Yahweh, Yahuwah is chaos, ruin, destruction, and mischief. You're basically saying Satan is the creator. Um, his name is not God. That comes from Gad, the, the god of luck, good luck. There are no gods. There are false gods. People make things gods, but they're not gods. They're not Elohim. Um, the fourth commandment is guard the Sabbath. To kadosh it, make it holy. As Yahweh your Elohim commanded. The Sabbath is the seventh day of the week. Uh, six days you labor and shall do your work, but the seventh day is a, is a Shabbat of Yahweh your Elohim. You don't do any work. Not you, not your children, not your servants. Um, not your machinery, nor any visitors, the fifth commandment, respect your father and your mother as Yahweh your Elohim has commanded you. The sixth commandment, don't murder, Whew, boy, you know, it's not thou shalt not kill. You know, I've killed insects, but I've never murdered an insect, you know? Murder, boy, talk about demonic attachments. I mean, when somebody murders an animal or a human being, man, there's a powerful attachment for the forces of darkness to use on that person for the rest of their days. Uh, commandment number seven, don't commit adultery. Well, that's not only, uh, you know, it's pointing at marriage. You know, if you're married, you, you made a vow. Keep the vow. But more importantly, don't commit adultery against Yahweh by worshiping other things or people or spirits or angels or whatever you want to call them. Do not steal, the Eighth Commandment. The Ninth Commandment is don't bear false witness about anything. And um, Commandment number 10 is don't covet your neighbor's wife, your neighbor's house, his field, his servants, his things, whatever belongs to your neighbor. Don't don't covet it. Um, and, you know, I point at these commandments because um, you follow these and um, you will see less sin. You're not going to stop sinning completely because you're not yet perfect. You have to be perfect to never sin. Romans chapter 3 verse 10. As it has been written, there is none righteous. No, not one. There is no one who is understanding. There is none who is seeking Elohim. They have all turned aside. They have together become worthless. There is none who does good. No, not one. Um, you know, you can't, you can't stop sinning. And, and most importantly, if you try and stop sinning by your own strength, you are just going to fail miserably and enter even more darkness because you're missing the point. You don't fill yourself with the Kodesh spirit. He fills you. 
He changes you. Um, if you're going to stop sinning in a particular area, He is going to create that change in your heart to the point where you will be amazed at um, how it happened. You'll, you'll be shouting from the rooftop and in a sense, you know, that, um, boy, that I never could have done it. I mean, I had nothing to do with it. It just, it's a miracle. When he does things, it's miraculous. When you try and change uh, things, you just make it worse. You cannot stop yourself from sinning. Um, and you shouldn't try. What you should do is go to him in prayer about it and say, you know, Father, um, you know, I keep doing this and, and I, I don't want to do this anymore. Um, please help me. Show me your mighty power and ability to, uh, to change me. Let me see that miracle. And let him change you. If there's anything you can do, it's get into the word. Get into prayer and stop seeking the things of the world. If you keep going after uh, things in the world, thou shalt not covet. Thou shalt not covet. That's why I went to the Ten Commandments, the Tenth Commandment. Thou shalt not covet. You know, desiring the things of the world, you're loving the world, which means you're hating Him. And if you keep going to the things of the world thinking that there's something special there for you, um, you're turning your back on Him. You, and, you know, you're not going to stop sinning, but you have to turn to Him and also consume your time with the things of His kingdom instead of the things of this world. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, For the weapons that we fight with are not fleshly, but mighty in Elohim for overthrowing strongholds. If you're caught up in a particular sin that's bothering you or um, there's a temptation that you can't seem to get rid of, that's a stronghold. Um, and the weapons that we fight with are mighty in Elohim for overthrowing these strongholds, for overthrowing reasonings, demonic whisperings, and every high matter that exalts itself against the knowledge of Elohim, taking captive every thought to make it obedient to Hamashiach, to the Messiah, and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is complete. Um, our weapons, prayer. Check out those other video links I have in the more info section. Um, and uh, we get into prayer. So, you know, why do I keep sinning? I'm born again. Why do I keep sinning? Well, because you're not perfect. And because you keep uh, giving the world your interest more than his kingdom. Um, you have certain attachments to things that you're maintaining an important, giving them an importance more than you give his word and your prayer time importance. So, uh, I hope that helps answer that question. Shalom.